The Syntax of Things by Arisha. Chapter 50, parentheses of H. It's my birthday. Papa said. I'm 17. Of age and all. I can use magic whenever I want now, can't I? Severus pushed the window open, surprised to see that the green hill had now been replaced by a dreary, suspiciously tranquil lake and an unpaved dirt road. Shifting locations, he remembered, but he'd decided long ago that Dumbledore's words were not to be trusted. It wasn't real. Were he to jump out the window, he was sure the delusion would immediately shatter. Would he find himself in a dungeon, as he suspected? Where is your owl? Severus asked. Potter glared. You're not going to say anything? Say, Merlin, help him not this again. Severus traced the window sill with his fingers. The year you were born marks only your entry into the world, he said absentmindedly. Other years where you prove your worth are the ones worth celebrating. Potter rolled his eyes. In other words, happy birthday, Harry. In other words, have you trained? Severus threw his outer cloak to the bed and summoned a cup of tea from the kitchen. I can't focus. It's so boring here. Drives me crazy. Where were you? Severus pretended to listen as he let the boy go through the details of his first birthday cake, and every word he uttered added another burden to the tragedy that Severus's jab was. He vaguely recalled the time when Potter would avoid talking to him outside the classroom at all costs, and was terrified at the realization that he simply did not mind the brat anymore. Oh well. The boy would soon be dead anyway, he remembered. He decided on ignoring that fact until the time came. Worrying too much would tear him apart and make him useless. The boy did not matter. The war did. Take out your wand and clear your mind. Potter looked up. What? Today? What for? He looked at Severus as though trying to uncover some sort of well-hidden mystery. The hilarity of his panicked face caused laughter to escape Severus, and he shook his head dismissively as he sat on the bed. Potter crawled onto the bed too and sat cross-legged across from him on the mattress. Legitimacy isn't something one can always master just because one succeeded once. He needs vigilance, hard work, training, he added. I'm not going to train today, Potter stated in a steady voice. Severus stared. Potter let out a sigh, chewing on his lip. Then he looked away. Don't say it. Don't. You will regret it. Happy birthday. As soon as he said it, he wanted to take it back. Maybe some venom could make up for it. Although you still look like a 14-year-old. Oh, sod off. Potter shrugged and crawled closer. Too close. Severus should have better instincts when it came to dodging attacks, he thought, as Potter's arms clutched tightly around his neck, and Potter's face was buried into the crook of Severus's neck. Severus raised his arms as to not touch him, his mind running through the ways he could get the little bastard off his lap without any further physical contact. Maybe with a curse. What in Merlin's name are you doing now? A chuckle warmed his throat, and a harsh voice whispered, Hugging you? His heart was protesting loudly at the assault. His temper throbbed into his temples, and his tongue was nothing but a sponge. Despite himself, Severus shut his eyes as his arms finally curled around the boy, who looked nothing like a fourteen-year-old, and sighed. This is not to be misunderstood, he clarified. The line of misunderstanding had been crossed ages ago, though, and the hypocrisy of his weakness sickened him. Sickness, that's what it was. Depravity. Seventeen years of grieving and spying and pretending and teaching tightened around him, and it occurred to him that time does not like to be embraced by mortal beings. The simple pleasure of human contact, sobriety, and peace attacked him like tingly demons that desired his death. He wished for a moment of freedom, a moment to truly satisfy himself with what he had, but he knew he couldn't have it, because all he ever loved was doomed to end with death and haunt him with another death, and then another. Caring was wrong. He could not tell why he had to remind himself that so often. Another heart was beating against his own, and that affectionate embrace that enclosed him was suddenly not a hug. It was a noose. I want to kiss you, Potter said. Severus pushed the boy away in terror. There had to be a way to move past this point. He was stuck in hell with James Potter's son. Gay son! Too gay! Too close! Severus exhaled away his panic and bolted up, ready for the fight that was assuredly on the way and coming. Why couldn't the brat just keep his mouth shut for once? Sorry, 
Potter said, forget. As you can see, Severus hissed, I do not forget, and you keep on reminding me that I should have never forgotten, that I should have opted out of this thing months ago. Well, sorry for being honest then, as though you don't know that I think of it. What changed now that I told you? I've told you before. Yes. And he had hoped he'd heard wrong, hoped that Potter was confused, wrong, lying. Hypocrite. The little idiot, what did he think he was doing? Didn't he know that he was playing with fire? Didn't he know that he had no right? We've had this ridiculous conversation before, and let me assure you, you will fish nothing new out of it. If you were to start this again, I'm leaving. Coward. He wouldn't slap him. He would leave. Where are you going? Severus! Fingers clutched around his arm, and Severus looked at the little devil that Potter was in disbelief. The repressed affliction that the boy had been watering with his delusions had finally broken loose, it seemed. The outburst meant to burn it all down could not be postponed anymore. Don't push me away, because I won't go. Not like that. You can't be mad over the fact that I like you. I'm not ashamed of it. But I can't lie to you anymore. You can and you will. Please. Severus pushed Potter's hand away violently. Screw Voldemort, he would kill the boy himself. What do you want, Potter? You want me to confess my endless love to you? Drop to my knees and kiss your feet to express my wholehearted affection. Crying on your shoulder for the unfairness that life is. You're seeking the wrong person, boy. Go find yourself another queer little Gryffindor and unify with him, if that's what you want. I've nothing of the kind to offer you. I'm your professor. You... None of it. Every time you throw yourself at me, you only embarrass yourself further. Have some dignity and keep this idiocy to yourself. For your sake, for mine, for both, most likely. You expect me to believe that you abandoned your whole life to be here with me because you had to. You think I'm so stupid, I won't see that you chose this. Or are you lying to yourself too? You're probably here exactly because you know how I feel. I bet you love the attention. It's an obligation, you moron! For a moment, Potter looked like he might cry. Then he shook his head, and when he looked up, his eyes were cold. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's an obligation. Maybe the only reason you agree to whatever Dumbledore asks of you is that you can't get over your remorse for what you did. I've thought about that, you know. You'd still be a real Death Eater anyway, if things were different, wouldn't you? You are a child, Potter. I regret wasting my time on you. He turned to leave, but Potter stumbled behind him, and he was soon in front of him again. There was rage flickering in his eyes. Obligation to what? Severus tried to walk past him, but Potter blocked him again. Obligation to what? You think it's going to change anything? You think it's going to bring her back? Enough, Severus warned him. You think it's going to bring her back? Potter repeated. Severus pushed him aside roughly and finally reached the teapot port key that laid on the floor. Before he could activate it, Potter yanked it out of his grip and threw it on the bed with all his might. It crashed on the headboard, cracked, and then rolled back to the mattress. Hate to disappoint you, Professor, but nothing will make it better, and nothing will bring you closer to her because she simply doesn't exist anymore. There was only one kind of shock worse than the totally unexpected. The expected for which one had refused to prepare. There was a feeling of disbelief that came over him. He did what he was supposed to do, which was to listen, but in fact he was not there at all. Another cracking sound distracted him, and it occurred to him that the teapot had dropped to the floor. He didn't care to inspect the damage. His eyes were on Potter. You think I don't miss my parents? A bitter chuckle escaped Potter's throat. I miss them every damn day, and I can't even recall their faces. I can't wallow on it. It'd be useless. It'd be stupid. I'll never be happy for not having them in my life, but either way, I have to move on. There was some emotion between them that made the air thick, and Severus could only name it honesty, but he was sure that honesty was not an emotion. I have moved on, Potter. Anger was useful only to a certain point, and pouring it now upon Potter would be careless. Don't do it. Don't dignify anything he says with any response. He doesn't matter. He's nothing. But he wasn't, and Severus's rage was suddenly boiling so intensely his stomach turned. All the better. You should be thanking me on your knees for everything I've done to save your skin all these years, he hissed. For blindly risking my life for you, doing all I can to keep you sound and safe. I'm not weak, Potter. I'm responsible. 
I do what I must while you play the little fairy queen with your friends and make up ridiculous fantasies to fill your empty days. Potter laughed. You do what you must to cleanse your soul from the guilt. You know what? If you want to protect me out of duty or, or obligation or whatever, I don't care. Sure, go for it. Do it. He'll probably kill me anyway, no matter what you do. So no biggie. But I won't have you protecting me out of remorse for my mother's death. That's sick. You believe you know it all. That's what you said to Dumbledore. He asked you if it was remorse, and then you agreed to protect me for her sake. I know what I saw, Snape. Careful now. No! Does anyone even know who you are? Because I'm stuck with you in this prison, and sometimes I think I've no idea at all. Why do you care? Harry blinked, the silence of the room ringing into his ears after the intense shouting. Why did he? What do you think of Voldemort? What do you really think? Do you ever admire him? Do you look up to him? End of discussion. Hell no, not again. You'll tell me. You'll tell me. Harry went on, but Snape didn't answer, and instead he merely walked to the fireplace and reached for the flu powder. Harry snatched the jar from his fist violently and threw it against the wall. Fucking listen to me, goddamn you! How can you still ask why I care? All I'm trying to say is that I love you! Harry's breath came out forcefully. His forehead was covered in sweat. With a grimace of disgust, Snape grabbed Harry's shoulders and pushed him back against the wall. With his teeth bared, he hissed so close to Harry's mouth that his breath tickled Harry's lips. Do so for all I care. I will not watch my life fall apart just because of this madness. You will stop bringing it up and you'll give up on any ridiculous hopes that concern me. Or I'll obliviate you. This absurd obsession with my person will cease. I never wished for you to be in my life. I never wished for any of this. And what you've convinced yourself you want is nothing but a desperate cry for a family you've sorely misinterpreted for something else in your disturbed little mind. Harry snorted. Indeed, they'd done this before. Are you through? Snape's grip tightened on his shoulders. Quite. And then Harry was pressed against the wall with a strong hand around his throat and was kissed. Passionately, a trembling fury made his head dizzy and his heart weak. Their mouths crashed together and Harry moaned in shock as Snape bit his lower lip hard. Snape pushed back as savagely as he had pulled close. He looked away, hiding that pained expression Harry had seen so many times before. Harry didn't dare to talk. He waited for Snape to begin to say something, to leave, or to stay. One could always hope, after all. But Snape never said a thing. He didn't have to. Harry realized he wasn't the only one trembling. Potter stepped closer and with the softest of touches began unbuttoning Severus's shirt. Severus watched, petrified, unable to think of a protest. He wasn't gay, had never been. Child molesters disgusted him. Whatever the boy was doing to him, it had to be dark magic. At that moment, Severus truly believed it, that the creature before him was a demon sent to destroy him. Potter looked at him with big, innocent eyes, as though waiting for permission. He snaked his hands under Severus's shirt, and his palms pressed against his skin. Severus shivered in something that could not be anticipation, and only when Potter's hands rose to his shoulders in an attempt to take his shirt off, Severus's mind snapped into reality. <laughs> Flinching away, he let the disgust wash over him along with the dread, and he departed.